Carolyn Harris. Douglas. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and I'd also like to congratulate the member for Strangford on securing this important de debate and for his opening remarks. Uh, we have campaigned together on many issues and I'm very happy to be part here to participate today. And many members will be aware of my campaign around support for families who've lost a child and I was very proud to have brought into the introduction of the Children's Funeral Fund which, for those of you who are not aware, means that grieving parents will have support to pay for the cost of their children's funeral. And this was after my own experience of losing my son Martin and having to take out a loan to cover his funeral. I lost Martin very suddenly in a car accident, but from the perspective of a parent, I have no idea whether it's worse to lose your child suddenly, like blowing out a candle, or to watch them pass away slowly from a life-threatening or life-timing condition. All I know is that whatever happens, it is the end of the world. The world feels like it's going on and it's bank holiday and you can't comprehend why people are still putting the kettle on and taking the milk off the door and the postman delivering. It is such a painful, painful experience and nothing can compare you for it. And realistically, it's not something you ever recover from. Nothing will ever be the same again. You think that you'll never worry about anything ever. You think that, well, how much the, the telephone bill or the phone or the uh, electricity bill is, you think that nothing ever again will matter. And in reality, it's more painful because you worry more and you keep waiting for that moment when something really bad is going to happen again. And I think that stays with you for the rest of your life. And tragically, 5,000 babies, children and young people, that's 5,000 children whose parents have to face that dreadful pain every year. And it's a pain that nobody can help them with. One thing that we can do for these families at such a difficult time is to learn the lessons of, and try to ease other lessons like financial worries. There, there are very many additional costs when you lose a child, apart from the funeral. There's all the other things it's, which seem, at the time, seem they don't really matter, but they do matter. And when you have a child with a life-threatening illness, it's back and forth the hospital, it's childcare for other children, it's, it's making sure you've got clean pyjamas and clean pants and vests for your child and maybe having to give up work in order to look after your child. And when your child passes away as a result of a long-term disability, those families may well have been receiving a benefit because of the child's health, such as carers allowance, disability living allowance or child benefit. And that loss will be a personal loss, but a huge financial loss as well. It, immediate financial loss. I never, ever, ever forget losing Martin on the Sunday. And for, sorry, I lost Martin on the Monday and had cashed his family allowance that morning. And the following week, having a letter asking me to repay that week's family allowance because I'd sent in a death certificate to say that Martin wasn't with me anymore. And as a parent, you cannot imagine how painful that is to even have the letter, let alone to have to try and find the money to pay them back. It may be small, but for a parent, it is literally the end of the world. And it's not only the financial hardship that parents face when they lose a child, because as I've said, there's the cost of the funeral. And the Royal London have found that on average, in 2018, the cost of a funeral was £3,757. For someone who's not expecting that, for someone who's not anticipating losing a child, or for someone who's on low income, that is an insurmountable amount of money. And some these, people have actually said to me, why didn't you have insurance? Why would you insure a child? You know, why would you consider insuring a child's passing? As you are maybe aware, in Wales, health is devolved. And I'm very proud that the Welsh Government led by example in this area and introduced the Children's Funeral Fund in 2017. I'm not going to say anything other than I had a letter from the Prime Minister on Easter Sunday last year and we've still not got the Children's Funeral Fund in the United Kingdom. Scotland has introduced it and Northern Ireland, in the absence of Stormont, has done it on a local level. So it's only parents in England who are actually not having support with their children's funeral. Now, when the Welsh Government were the first to introduce this fund, and they announced an additional £1 million investment to support the work of the End of Care Implementation Board. 
and this funding will go towards a variety of areas, including training for staff around having a difficult end-of-life conversation with parents. I personally would like to thank the work of the charities who serve my constituency, and that's T. Haven, Hope House and T. Gobath. They are three wonderful charities who provide care to children and families in my constituency and many constituencies across Wales. I myself spent a lot of time after I lost Martin in trying to do what I can to help other families. In terms of pastoral care, I worked with mentally and physically handicapped children. I went to work for a children's cancer charity. I felt that my own personal experience would help those parents, um, and still today I talk to parents who've lost a child, um, and try to ration with them and say the thoughts that you were thinking, the worries that you were having, the, the fears and the fright that you experience day on, day out for the rest of your life. They're real, but they're not abnormal, and you need to share. So as a, as a country, if we can't support these people financially, if we can't give them that little bit of comfort so that it's only the emotion, something nobody, nobody can ever help you with. So I urge the minister to do whatever she can mm -hmm. to make sure that families who are in my position and the position of other people never have to worry about the incidentals of life and they can grieve with dignity and with peace of mind. Thank you, Minister.